Welcome to This Is More Architecture. My name is Peter. I'm here with Surf from Zalando. Good to have you here. Good to be here. All right, so before we talk about this, um, tell us what Zalando does. Yes, so Zalando is an online retail fashion platform for connecting brands, uh, partners, and customers. We have presence in around 17 countries with over 28 million active users per month. All right, so what's the, the problem you want to talk us through? So today we are going to talk about how we built our data lake with just nine people and uh, serving around 100 teams inside Zalando. All right, sounds like uh, quite a challenge. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Yes, so let me just talk about Nakadi, which is our event source. So Nakadi is an open source distributed event bus uh, mm -hmm. that is an abstraction, uh, API abstraction over Kafka queues. So all the microservices in Zalando, they talk to Nakadi, they're mm -hmm. authenticated and they are pushing events to Nakadi. Then what Nakadi does is that it batches those events mm -hmm. uh, because different events have different throughputs, checkouts uh, and search events have different throughputs. So it batches them into five minutes mm -hmm. or 50 MB mm -hmm. and writes to this Nakadi archival bucket. All right, so Nakadi's output is being persisted right there. Uh, now I see uh, a Lambda with SQS right underneath. Uh, looks like a pattern. So what's going on in there? So we came up this pattern in Zalando that we always associate a Lambda with an incoming uh, source SKS and a DLQ so that if something fails, we have a failover and we can reprocess the messages. When the files are written in the uh, Narkavadi archiver bucket, an uh, object notification is generated and pushed to the SKS here. Mm -hmm. This SKS messages then invokes the Lambda, mm -hmm. which then partitions it into uh, hourly fashion and writes it to the raw bucket. All right, so it's sort of raw, but partitioned, so reorganized, uh, not in content, but in structure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, what about those next steps? Yes, so here what we do once it has been written to the raw bucket, mm -hmm. we still have to process for different streaming and batch applications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a Lambda here, which uh, again uh, is populated or called by the object creation that happens in mm -hmm. the raw bucket. Mm -hmm this creates a message here and it generates this lambda. Mm -hmm. This lambda has a different purpose from the first lambda. It enriches the message attributes with the event type names and also with the uh, the attributes like partitions uh, mm -hmm. of that a particular event type. Mm -hmm. And then it is pushed to the SNS mm -hmm. where uh, it has all these attributes. Understood. So it's pushed right here. And so it's published and there's, I assume, multiple subscribers. It's mm -hmm. a um, fan out approach. Um, so what happens in this area? Yes, so you said it correctly. We use SNS for the fan out. When this is fanned out, you can see that there are multiple SKS queues. So these SKS queues are subscribed on the SNS, but they are filtering on the event type which mm. we have enriched in the message attributes. So each SKS queue is for one particular event mm -hmm. and this SKS queues are then later on used by our downstream Spark jobs for uh, binary conversion of in Parquet format or Delta format, or just doing a stream stream join. All right, I see. So you basically already decide on message level, uh, mm -hmm. which final consumption will happen mm -hmm. uh, by filtering uh, based on those uh, on those attributes. Yes. Now, what's about this uh, part right here? Yes, so here, uh, this is no filter because this is still part of the data lake. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have in raw bucket, mm -hmm. we take all of the messages, but then we reformat it for different partition mm -hmm. and the partition level changes from hourly partition to the daily partition and we write it. We use it uh, because we have different serving layers for ad hoc queries, which analysts use, Presto, mm -hmm. and which is built on this main bucket. Understood, so this is the outcome of any of those areas. Now, a question I need to add, uh, when you talked about Nakari, you talked mm -hmm. about the load and that uh, Nakari at least is uh, consuming. Yeah. But how about the entire solution here? Mm -hmm. How much load can it cope with? So uh, after the events are coming in, obviously it's badged, mm -hmm. but we uh, we have a lot of metrics built around mm -hmm. it. We have a number of Lambda invocation that happens mm -hmm. per uh, second or per day. And we look at, uh, at different metrics uh, that are created. So using that, we can say that uh, we have around 2 million Lambda invocations mm -hmm. that happen mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just for this pipeline. We mm -hmm. have different pipelines for that. And uh, it can go up to 6 million also. Oh, wow. Okay, Surf, thank you very much for this amazing solution. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.